Greetings, gamers. It's your boy, Infinite Cows, back at it again with another installation of Nah Day. You may notice that I'm not currently in front of a diarrhea colored wall furnished with a fuse box and a print of an abstract painting. I don't even like which I have intentionally hung at an antique Godland angle for comedic effect. And that's because there is no longer a diarrhea colored wall furnished with a fuse box and a print of an abstract painting. I don't even like which I have intentionally hung at an antique Godland angle for comedic effect. In between the prior installation of Nerdy and this video, the wall has been painted. Also, I'm at my dad's house right now, and the wall with the fuse box is at my mom's house. I get very bothered by trolley cart problem type questions, and more so than the questions themselves, I'm bothered by the way people talk about them, because it's fun. It's fun to discuss hypotheticals, obviously, but some people get so into it and they get so rooted in their own initial perception of the problem that they become unwilling to look at it from any other angle and they become entirely locked off in the way they're thinking about it. Not even like, I'm not talking about, oh, it's frustrating that I can't convince other people that I'm right. It gets so absurd, especially when people start adding, the, adding in the what ifs. They refuse, like when they ex refuse to accept the premise, um, and they refuse to look at the problem for what it is and they get into semantics about like Okay, so it's classic trolley car problem. There's a trolley. It's it's lot. There's a train. It's lost control Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, and it's gonna run over five people. Oh my goodness But you could flip the switch you could grab that switch by the you could grab it and you could flip it And if you did that it would only run over one person and people go Oh, I would run over and untie the five people before the train hit. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. Or like, do I, kn they, they start asking follow up, follow up questions are the worst. They start asking follow up questions like, do I know the people? Do I know who they are? Like, are any of them older or younger? <sighs> Just answer the question. It's about action versus inaction. It's not about the people or the train. <sighs> I don't like how like 90% of people will say, Oh yeah, I would flip the switch. I'm a good person. I for one definitely wouldn't pull the lever because <laughs> I'm a human person, you see. And forced to make a split decision like that, I would freeze. Flipping the switch is something that would take a massive amount of bravery that is not present in almost anyone. A very small percentage of the population would be capable of making that decision and acting on it. But everyone seems to assume they're in the 2%. Or they just don't think... Though at the same time, now I'm sort of doing the same thing that I say, hey, that those dude getting into the semantics of it, but that brings it back to what, what's the point of the question? Is it, is, about, is it about the morality? Is it about the, would I actually be able to do it? Who knows? And that's the reason, that gets down to the root of why it bothers me so much. It's because I don't know what the real point of the question is and nobody really knows what the point of the question is and the conversations always devolve into what the point of the question is rather than talking about the question itself because there is no one point to the question because it is so multifaceted and it's interpretable in so many different ways it just gets messy there are too many variables and it's been discussed too much to the point where there are all sorts of variations that just overcomplicate things. It's stressful to talk about it. And I hate it. And I hate how I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I do not like trolley car problems. R the only way I want other people to react to my opinions is to say, yes, I understand your opinion. I don't need agreement. I just need you to say, oh, I get what you're saying. And some people in the world have find it so difficult to separate understanding from agreement that I'm trying to just get my point across and they're like, no, 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 you're wrong. 
And that makes me think that they don't understand my opinion. Sometimes they do understand my opinion and just agree with it, but they don't say, I understand what you're saying, but they just say, no, you're wrong. Quick tip, if you're talking with someone, you're talking and you're discussing and you're arguing, if you understand what they're saying, but you disagree with it, say that you understand what they're saying, but that you disagree with it. Because if you don't say you understand, the other person is going to keep trying to explain to you what they think in simpler and simpler terms, insulting your intelligence more and more, because if you don't acknowledge directly that you understand what they're saying, they won't have any way of knowing that you understand. We're getting a lot deeper here on this install- this- this- the third installation of Nerdy than, uh, the previous two. I'm older and wiser. <laughs> I do fully recognize the very real possibility that all of these things I'm saying that I feel like are so smart are just dumb teenagerisms and I'm just like every other teenager thinking I'm so smart thinking I know better than everyone else and I genuinely do think uh, uh, with some things I know better than anyone else well not anyone else but I generally think that I am uh, of above average intelligence and wisdom which is foolish I know but I am capable of recognizing my self-contradiction without exploding. I am not a computer program. I can contain logical fallacies and just cope with that and be okay with it, come to terms with it. Especially online, this self-contradiction within people is a massive target. Everyone's always looking to see if you say something that contradicts something you said earlier. Yes, people can change people who said one thing five years ago can completely change their mind and not feel that way at all five years in the future but that's not the big thing for me the big thing for me is that self-contradiction is not inherently negative my confliction about the trolley cart problem where I don't like when other people are trying to convince me of their opinion because I've already formulated my opinion and I want them to understand but I'm kind of also trying to convince them and I'm completely self-contradictory when it comes to that but that doesn't make me a bad person it doesn't make me stupid it just means there's this one area where I'm irrational and you know what humans are humans are irrational I think one of my greatest strengths as a person is my ability to recognize some of my shortcomings without necessarily focusing on the negativity of it. Because if every time I acknowledged to myself um, one of the things that isn't so great about me, if every time I did that I then felt the need to remove that negative aspect of my person from myself, which isn't possible. That would be really unhealthy. That would be me either constantly feeling terrible about myself um, and falling into a spiral of negativity, or it would result in me no longer recognizing my shortcomings. Because if I really got down on myself, um, and fixated on my negative qualities anytime I notice them, that would effectively be in a Pavlovian way training myself not to notice the bad things about me. If I felt terrible every time, like if I genuinely, genuinely felt terrible every time I contradicted myself or did something stupid, that wouldn't teach me to not do stupid things that would teach me to not acknowledge the stupid things I do. I shouldn't have to say it because everyone should be taught from a young age how to use this little, little thing called critical thinking 
but take all of the things that I've said here today with a grain of salt because I'm 17 years old and more importantly I'm a human person who has only experienced so many life circumstances. I've only experienced one perspective of the world. There have been billions and billions and billions of them and I've only experienced one of them. Well, actually, I've experienced, like, 20% of one of them. So take everything I say with a grain of salt, formulate your own opinions, because I fully acknowledge that what I say might be stupid, but I would much, much rather feel the way I feel and express the way I feel and then find later in life that I feel differently than be so afraid of regret that I don't feel anything.